I'll be shopping today. Boying. More trees. <sighs> They're quite heavy with one hand. So, bought 200 quicks. Quick thorn. Uh, we took out a little hedging earlier in the year because it was rotten. Lots of um, dead almond, old blackthorn that collapsed. And uh, also a couple of uh, baby Wellingtonias as well. But the end is good in the pot. You've got to put them in the ground. This is the story. I'm having a problem with this. I bought two Wellingtonias. Uh, trees that I've always wanted. I've got 50 acres to choose from and I can't decide where to put it because this is a generation decision. A couple of generations decision. So if I get it wrong now, uh, I don't want my grandchildren to have to cut it down because I put it 20 foot in the wrong place. So I'm going to have to think about this a bit harder I think. So. Um, the idea is nice to put the tree in and I will put it, both of them in but A, they don't want to go too close to the house because they are going to cause a lot of shade and they do take quite a lot of moisture so it's got to be far enough away um, from the house but also in saying that I will probably never see the benefit from it myself so where to go? where to go? I might have to think outside the box a bit. Big biscuit. It's 22nd of February 2019 and it's jolly warm out there. I'm not wearing my normal overalls, which I, I should really because these are creosote posts and you, you really don't want to be messing about with them, but uh, I get hot. I don't like getting hot, so I'm going to take the risk of getting a little bit perhaps on me scared and well, you know, farmer thing in it, so I'll be alright. I don't know what you complain about, you had it this morning, you'll have it again later on. Come on youngsters. Hello mate. Hello mate. Hello mate. No, not going to play. No. All they want me to do is open that bin lid and chuck some coarse mix in there. Are you going to have any more? Pretty monkeys. Get up. Come on, get your bed. Good girl. Thing hasn't been started since uh, snow plowing, but she will. One thing though, having the post armor on the front of the tractor. So much easier to do by yourself. No stiff neck. No shoulder ache.
covered in crap now. I'm going to make sure he's locked in a minute. Legs off with it. We're ready to rock and roll. There we are. Rock and roll enough. My wife says I look fantastic in these. I'm not entirely sure I believe her. seem an awful lot of work for two little tiny trees but in a hundred years the bit of effort I make now could make all the difference okay I won't see it but I can imagine it I can so I can see it in my mind's eye I can see what it's going to be like and uh, I'm hoping that if the family are still here, my great great grandchildren perhaps will say, well, great great granddad planted that, and that, and that, and all of that. So, just before they cut it all down and sell it for housing, over my dead body, I'll haunt you if you do that. It won't be pretty. I'm going to get the first post in, um, get the tape measure out, measure it up, and uh, then we'll get the rest of them in afterwards. Oh, of course, warm. It's oh, mid end of February, and I'm, and I'm sweating, I haven't done anything. Right, I think that's cool enough for one afternoon. Where do I put the tape measure? I know where I put the tape measure. I've left it in my Land Rover, haven't I? Oh well, the walk won't kill me. See you in a minute.
throw it. Okay. Oh well, after going back at the house, turns out the dog just broke at the dustman. Luckily, I very lazily brought the quad down to bring my hammer and the uh, tape measure. Um, so uh, I can nip up and back quite quick. Right then. Bang some post. Posts knocked in. I'm going to put a rail along the top now. These are deliberately high because the cat are going to reach over the top. Um, they don't have to be quite so deep because they're going to support each other. At least that's the plan. So I'm going to put the rail sort of three or four inches from the top so I can put a strand of barbed over the very top to stop the cat reaching over. So. Right, so a lot of you old hands are going to know this already, but if you've never done fencing before and you're nailing, nice dry timber especially near the end if you leave your nail sharp as you drive it in it splits the fiber of the wood so as it splits the fiber of the wood it actually pulls it apart and you can end it with a split down the entire length of the well the entire length you'll loosen the nail so you got you got to do is you've got to use your knocking stick and a post and blunt the end Hey, voila. So if you blunt the end of your nail rather than sharp, instead of splitting the fibre, it actually crushes it as it goes through. So it kind of drills a better hole and it should stop the end of your timber from splitting. So good tip if you're a bit, do a bit of fencing. In fact, any bit of wood, if you do not want to split the bit of wood, take the point off your nail. Right, it's the same again. You're probably going to feel this, so if I do these two posts, it shouldn't feed back through there. Got 
that much out of square. Honest. See? Um, in a minute, no one will know. You could at least cut it square. Ah, perfect. You feel that over there. The fence isn't quite right, but if I tap that post down an inch and a half, it'll look right. If it looks right, it is right. So you can go back there, you can have a bonnet eye view. Oh, you know. Two, I'm planting over here amongst these birches. Excuse me.
come on top of the post. Oh, sorry. Down. Basically, I want enough room to put a bit of barbed above. Mm -hmm. You might have to. Can you pull that post towards you? Go on! Go on, Harry! Come on. Come on. Come on. You need more pies, mate, that's what you need. <laughs> Alright, hang on a second. Just uh, hold that red a second, and I'll pull this in a bit. See, there are some benefits to being a fat necker sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. Basically, it's got to be strong enough yeah. that if one wants to come and scratch his back on it, so those two there rails there, yeah. once I've got the wire on, I should put a second set of rails so the second rail will go at the top of the um, net. Yeah. Because the cattle will put their head through and rub their throats on the net and push against it oh, and right. stretch it. So I've got, I've got high tensile, I might put another rail along the top of the net, which would be about yay AI. Yeah. And a strand of barbed wire in between. Yeah, they can't get their heads straight. They're not going to put their head in there. Yeah. So that's when they damage stuff, is when they can get in it and push it. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of effort for a pity little tree, but... Oh, it's little at the moment. Yeah. Come back in, you know, go in your toy machine and come back in 100 years. Yeah. I like to think that's still going to be there. Because that big. birch won't be. You'll be dead. You'll be dead. That old one probably isn't going to go anyway. So the only ones affected really is that oak behind it, yeah. which I'm not sure he's in fantastic health anyway, Yeah. and that oak over there, well, that's going to be 50 years before this affects them, yeah. so I don't think, I ain't quite so worried about the birch as a <laughs> pioneer weed tree anyway, so. How ready? Yeah, pioneer tree. Oh, what's that so then? The pioneer tree, so when the ice sheet melted, yeah. the last ice age, and the ice uh, retreated north, Mm -hmm. It only just touched here. I don't think it quite reached here. It was probably... I've not got over to Wales, but I don't think it crossed the Severn to this side. All right, okay. Um, but basically when um, the ice retreated, everything was barren. There was nothing. There was no grass, no trees, no, nothing. Yeah. But these produced so many seeds. Yeah. I mean, tens of thousands of seeds, and they're light. Yeah. So as the ice was retreating, the seeds of these were blowing onto <laughs> the bare ground. Yeah. Birches... Um, almost genetically made to, to grow on bare ground. Yeah. A bit of bare salt takes takes it. Cool. The competition for everything else, there wasn't any. Yeah. Because it was literally older. I think it was Scott Pine, Alder and Birch were the three that followed the ice back and yeah. everything else followed behind that. So there's <laughs> no competition. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these are called pioneers. Yeah. That's cool. But they're, they are short-lived, 110, 140 years yeah. for that. Whereas that over there is... 300 years to grow, yeah. 300 years to live, and 300 years to die. Really? So I usually say two, uh, three sets of three for an oak. It's about a thousand years roughly then? Yeah, so an oak tree should last many hundred thousand years or so. Uh, there's one over in Cromwell. Yeah. I, don't know, I think he was 12 or 1400 years old. No way. So, and there's another one over Wickwar, a great big hollow thing that you can stand inside. Yeah. At the top cut out by the electricity board. Um, a few years ago, because they tried to fell it. Yeah. So they had a, a TPO, yeah, TPO on it, but uh, it's a PTO. And a TPO on it, so yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, you've done the uh, Torrance Chestnut. Did we take you to look at that one? I don't think we so. We were over there, you in the church, Torrance. Is that the oldest tree? No, it was. It's, um, it was planted by King George V. Yeah. And it was a boundary marker. Alright. But it's. A, uh, it's, it's big, it's huge. Um, the tree itself, because where it's taken down and fallen and spread about, is from here to my Land Rover. Really? Yeah, it's massive. Oh, no, I don't think I have seen that. Yeah, then. but the old original stem is probably the size, twice the size of my tractor, mm -hmm. but where it's spread out over the years, it's now just massive. I also thought the largest yeah. living organism on the planet was a honey fungus. Oh, really? And he's in Canada, and yeah. I think he's like two and a half miles from one end to the other. Really? Yeah. Wow. And that's the same thing, genetically identical at that end. And they've been studying it since the Second World War, or First World War or something, so yeah. this huge honey fungus, so <laughs> our malaria. 
Right. Dog park. And I bet that's our old man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're going, come and meet you, see your mother. <laughs> uh, if you want to take donkey back up and um, sort that lot out. Sure you got. Is that anything? Yeah, I, um, I'm not going to use it. No? Because uh, I'll put the wire around it. Hopefully yeah. the deer won't have it tonight. Hopefully, yeah. I'll put some fence around that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>